When the Wright brothers invented the plane, the world changed forever. In a way, it arguably shrunk, where once travel around the world was a privilege reserved only for those who could justify spending three whole days on a boat to a different country, now any of us can just flash a piece of paper in a wallet and then zoom off to wherever we fancy. And these days, those journeys are getting shorter and shorter because planes are getting speedier and speedier. These are the 20 fastest planes in the world. Number 20, Sukhoi Su-27 Flanker. The Sukhoi S-27, or just Flanker, was the most advanced aircraft ever created at its time in the mid-1980s. The main purpose of this USSR twin-engine aircraft was to assert air superiority over the Americans during the Cold War. That's right, the Soviet Union needed to counter the American fighter F-15 Eagle, as well as the B-70 Bomber, two masterpieces of aviation capable of reaching Mach 3 speed. Designed by engineers of the Russian Central Aero Hydrodynamic Institute, led by Mikhail Semenov, the first version of the Sukhoi Su-27 enters operational service in 1985. For the flanker, its top speed of 2.35 Mach brings it to the very edge of USSR craftsmanship, the first fly-by-wire control system on a Russian jet ever. And as you guessed it, the aircraft was heavily armed, a 30 millimeter gun and 10 external pylons that can hold both air-to-air, -air, heat-seeking, short and medium range missiles. Due to all its accomplishments and popularity, it has very many different variants, some of which are top modern even today. Now it's time for the strange topic. Most tech businesses are in a race against each other to develop some kind of new society-changing innovation. And one such race is the race to design and develop the world's first ever hypersonic airplane for passengers. When such a plane is finally on the market, it will create a situation in which global travel will be sizably overhauled, totally shaking up how we see the planet and where we can go. Imagine going to another country in a matter of minutes like it was little more than a town down the road. Remarkable. This image comes from one such company and is concept art of their design within this space. A sleek but bulky red design, as you can see. They've opted for designing something that is shorter than the average passenger plane, but wider, essentially merging the design of a common Boeing with a jet fighter. Whether this is merely an aesthetic choice or fundamental to achieving supersonic speeds, is unclear to anyone other than those working on it. All that is clear is that, soon enough, this company or another will achieve a hypersonic plane that is large enough to carry as many passengers as the standard passenger plane. And when they do, the travel industry will have an economic boom that's truly unprecedented. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag StrangeTopic. Number 19, General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark. The General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark, also known as the Cadillac of the F-111 Force, is a 22-meter-long aircraft and a medium-range interdictor and tactical attack aircraft that both served the U.S. Navy and U.S. Air Force. It can cruise through the skies at a maximum speed of 2,656 kilometers per hour. It is an all-weather bomber that was developed by the United States in the 1960s and manufactured from 1967 until 1976. The development of this aircraft was challenging, but once all the issues were resolved, the F-111 proved to be a formidable and highly reliable weapon. That's why some air forces continue to use it today. The General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark is also well-suited for strategic nuclear bombing, aerial reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. The aircraft wasn't deployed until September 1972, when 48 of them performed more than 4,000 flights. After its official introduction into the U.S. Air Force, an additional 554 were built in 1973 for the Royal Australian Air Force, and some remain in service today in Australia. Number 18, McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle. From the mid-1960s, the U.S. Air Force began a series of studies for the development of a new combat aircraft under the designation FX. In February 1968, the U.S. Air Force officially limited the FX program to the development of an air superiority aircraft fighter that was from then on designated as the F-15. This aircraft had to be able to engage 
and destroy opponent aircraft from beyond visual range. In July 1972, McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle was born and entered the U.S. Air Force services in 1973. The F-15 Eagle has been manufactured and used by the U.S. ever since. It's still used today, and that's no surprise considering the fact that it is the most victorious present-day fighter aircraft with a record of 100 wins and zero losses in aerial battles. Mic drop. It features a unique combination of flexibility and acceleration. The F-15 Eagle can pierce the skies at a maximum cruise speed of 3,019 kilometers per hour. It can be loaded with ammunition and prevent attacks. The F-15 has also successfully served the Israeli Air Force. Number 17, Mikoyan MiG-31 Foxbat. The Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-31, also known as the Foxbat, is a Russian interceptor aircraft fighter. It's derived from the famous MiG-25 Foxbat, but differs by the presence of a second crew member and a radar with a look-down, shoot-down capability, which enables to detect and fire targets that are flying at a lower altitude. To this day, the Foxbat is the only aircraft besides the MiG-25 to fly above Mach 3, which is the ratio between the TAS, true airspeed, and the local speed of sound. This aircraft was called upon to defend the airspace above areas such as Siberia, where there are few ground radars. The MiG-31 had to be completely independent when it came to recognizing infrastructures on the ground. It also had to demonstrate an increased resistance to electronic warfare conditions. As a result, it is the first fighter aircraft in the world to have adopted an electronically scanned radar. The MiG-31 also has a retractable infrared finder. The navigation system installed on board as well as the in-flight refueling boom enabled, for example, a Foxbat to carry out a Murmansk North Pole Chukotka test flight of more than 8,000 kilometers, completed in 8 hours and 49 minutes. The Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-31 is still used to this day. Number 16, XB-70 Valkyrie. The XB-70 Valkyrie was a prototype of an American supersonic bomber aircraft from the late 1950s. It was designed by the North American company, and only two units were built, one of which was destroyed in an accident. In the context of the early 1950s Cold War, armament doctrines were based on the use of long-range strategic bombers capable of delivering a nuclear strike on enemy soil through a non-stop flight from the United States territory. A new aircraft strategy was then developed, a high-altitude, low-speed round trip to save fuel and penetration of hostile territory at Mach 2 to avoid interception. The first prototype of the XB-70 emerged on May 11, 1964. The second version of the XB-70 was equipped with a radar along with additional elements. On June 8, 1966, this second prototype performed a supersonic boom measurement. In addition, this test allowed General Electric, the manufacturer of the XB-70's engines, to take promotional photos of the aircraft with other ones such as the F-104 Starfighter. However, the F-104 was caught in turbulence caused by the XB-70. Both aircraft collided, destroying the right vertical tail fin of the XB-70. After another minute of flight, the bomber fighter became uncontrollable and then crashed. The pilot of the XB-70 ejected himself in time, but his co-pilot perished. And so did the F-104 pilot. Number 15, Bell X-2 Starbuster. Like other American research aircraft of the 1950s, the Bell X-2 proved essential in pushing the boundaries of high-speed, powered, and manned flight. Following the success of the Bell X-1 project in the late 1940s, the Bell Aircraft Company was again commissioned by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautic, NACA, and the United States Air Force, USAF, to provide high-speed and rocket-powered research vessels. As a result, the Bell X-2 appeared in the mid-1950s and continued the rigorous flight test regime in the Mach 2, Mach 3 speed range. A pair of X-2 aircraft was produced for upcoming testing, and the product was nicknamed Starbuster. Unlike the straight wings of the X-1, swept-back mounted main wings were used, and the X-2 also presented aerodynamic refinements on a thinner fuselage. The X-2 reached a new speed record of Mach 2.87, it also became the first manned powered aircraft to cross the 30 plus kilometers altitude. With some modifications added to control the flight at Mach 3 plus, 
The X-2 then became the first aircraft to exceed Mach 3 on September 27, 1956. However, during that same flight, the plane experienced an inertia coupling that caused the rocket plane to spin out of control, killing its pilot. Following this accident, further developments on the product were officially discontinued. In total, three of them were built, and the program provided additional high-speed data until its withdrawal in December 1968. Number 14, Mikoyan MiG-25 Foxbat. At the beginning of the 1970s, during the Cold War, the American Air Force was very anxious. For several years, its intelligence services were informed that the USSR was developing a fighter plane superior to any aircraft ever known. The aircraft in question was the Soviet MiG-25, built by Mikoyan Gurevich. It flies at an extraordinary speed of 3,400 kilometers per hour and has excellent maneuverability. Nicknamed the Fox Bat by NATO, the plane seemed to outperform the best American machines at the time. On September 6, 1976, Viktor Belenko, a Russian pilot who was angry with his superiors, decided to go to the enemy with the airplane. During a training session aboard a MiG-25, Belenko simulated a crash and then slipped away to Japan and then landed in a civilian airport. Western intelligence found this hard to believe. A gift literally fell from the sky. American specialists disassembled the device from top to bottom and surprise, this inspection revealed that the Americans had overestimated the device's abilities. The Foxbat was actually incapable of dogfights, which are air gun combat. Its sole purpose was to intercept the American XB-70 Valkyrie. While extremely fast, the Foxbat was not as fast as the United States feared. Belenko revealed to the CIA that although the plane had indeed reached Mach 3.2, 4,000 kilometers per hour, its engines had almost exploded during this test. The speed also greatly limited its range of action. The icing on the cake was that the XB-70 Valkyrie project was unsuccessful, so the MiG-25 was actually designed to intercept a threat that never existed. Number 13, Lockheed YF-12. At the end of the 1950s, the United States tried to develop a bunch of aircraft fighters capable of flying at Mach 3. Kelly Johnson, director of Lockheed's Skuns Works, then proposed a fighter derived from its A-12 Oxcart aircraft, an aircraft in the final stages of development intended for the CIA. In 1960, the U.S. Air Force signed a contract for the purchase of three YF-12As. On April 16, 1964, the first test to drop inert missiles in flight took place. After some modifications and other tests dropping inert missiles, live firing began on March 18, 1965. During these tests, six of the seven intended targets were hit. The U.S. Air Force ordered 93 F-12Bs from Lockheed for the ADC, the Air Command Defense, on May 14, 1965. However, the Secretary of Defense canceled this purchase for the next three years due to the high cost of the Vietnam War. Ultimately, the U.S. Air Force preferred to launch the F-106X program, which seemed to be cheaper. This program was never finalized. In 1969, two YF-12s were loaned to NASA. They made nearly 300 test flights to explore thermal and aerodynamic phenomena encountered in flight at high speed and high altitude. In total, YF-12As performed 297 flights for the joint USAF-NASA program, or approximately 450 hours. Number 12, Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. The history of the SR-71 Blackbird began in the early 1960s. Developed by the American Lockheed, this supersonic aircraft made its first flight on December 22, 1964. Used two years later by the American Army for surveillance and reconnaissance missions, this strange bird had the peculiarity of flying at a high altitude and very quickly at more than Mach 3, 3,500 kilometers per hour. The aircraft holds two world records for a production aircraft, one for altitude and another for speed. The SR-71 Blackbird has indeed reached 25,929 meters and 3,529 kilometers per hour. It also holds the record for the fastest plane that has ever crossed the Atlantic. In 1974, it took less than two hours to reach London from New York. Thanks to its exceptional performance, the aircraft was able to escape Soviet missiles during the Cold War. It simply went faster than any other planes because of its aerodynamic shape and its two powerful General Electric J-58 turbojet engines. SR-71 Blackbirds were also powered by a specific fuel, JP-7, to prevent it from boiling. Its consumption was such that it was necessary to refuel it in flight several times per mission. 
Its price was proportional to its capacities, $2 billion per unit. 32 of them were built. The SR-71 Blackbird aircraft has performed more than 3,500 operational flights over Russia, North Korea, and Libya. It was permanently withdrawn from service in 1998. Number 11, North American X-15. The X-15 is a 15.47 meter long and 6.81 meter wingspan aircraft, essentially consisting of a large tank with a pilot at one end and a rocket engine at the other side. To ensure a minimum of lift, it has a streamlined fuselage, two small wings, and a set of four mobile fins at the rear that are added to the central cylinder. The X-15 is also equipped with numerous attitude thrusters such as small jets, which allow the aircraft to be oriented during flight phases in the high atmosphere. This is a crucial point for controlling the crossing of the densest layers. Calculations and wind tunnel simulations show that the ideal flight profile consists of raising the nose and presenting the belly of the X-15 to break as much as possible and dissipate energy and heat, which, in addition to control, involves very resistant materials. The shell is therefore not made of aluminum, but of a nickel alloy. Here comes the control now. Are you ready? In 1961, X-15 pilots, including Neil Armstrong, exceeded Mach 5 and even Mach 6, 6,500 kilometers per hour in the upper atmosphere. The data would be used both for NASA to study atmospheric reentries and later in the shuttle program. The data also served the U.S. Air Force, which was developing its SR-71 Blackbird. On July 17, 1962, Robert White finally exceeded 50 miles of altitude and became an astronaut. The X-15 then became the first space plane. Number 10, McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, United States. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II was the quintessential Western fighter of the Cold War era. It had it all performance, advanced avionics, and the ability to carry enormous quantities of sophisticated weapons. Originally designed as a carrier fighter for the United States Navy, the Phantom remained in frontline service as a fighter bomber and interceptor. The Phantom's superb performance was the result of its powerful twin jets, fed by fully variable air intakes. The initial production model for the U.S. Navy was a F-4H-1F redesignated F-4A in September 1962 which managed to achieve a number of world speed and time at height records. The next model was the F-4B, of which 649 examples were built. The U.S. Air Force first acquired the Phantom as the F-4B. Building on early experiences from the Vietnam War, the U.S. Air Force fielded another version of the aircraft, the F-4E, which included an improved radar, increased power, additional internal fuel, and, most importantly, an internal rotary cannon with a slatted wing for better maneuverability at high altitudes. A total of 1397 F-4Es were completed. The first RF-4C flew in August 1963 and was followed by a series of more than 500 aircraft, the last of which was handed over to the U.S. Air Force in 1974. Other modifications were conducted and led to the creation of the RF-4E, which was initially supplied to West Germany before being exported to Greece, Iran, Israel, Japan, and even Turkey. Number nine, the Mikoyan Gurevich YE-150 family. The Mikoyan Gurevich YE-150 was a series of single-seat interceptor prototypes designed and built by Mikoyan Gurevich in the USSR starting in 1955. The project was developed to meet an urgent need for interceptors that could counter Convair B bombers. Minus 58 Hustler in terms of speed, 2,000 kilometers per hour, and the Lockheed U-2 in terms of altitude, 23,000 meters. The Voiska PVO, Protivo Vozdushnaya Oborona Air Defense Forces needed a heavy interceptor capable of automatically intercepting the latest American bombers and reconnaissance aircraft. In response, the MiG Bureau developed a range of wide-ranging swept-wing fighter aircraft, the I-3 series, I-380, I-410, and I-420, my favorite, followed by the I-7 and I-75. The Ye-150 series, no relation to the now infamous, we shouldn't mention his name, was developed from the I-75. The demands of supersonic intercept speed and the ability to carry heavy avionics systems dictated the size. In comparison, the contemporary MiG-21F, similar to the airframe, weighed 4,819 kilograms and was 15.76 meters long. 
compared to 12,345 kilograms and 18.14 meters for the Ye-150. There will be no weapon systems installed on the Ye-150 and it will not be put into production, but development continued with the Ye-151 and Ye-152. Number 8. Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-23 Flogger, 1,553 miles per hour, Mach 2.04. The MiG-23 was designed to replace the MiG-21 at the request of the Soviet Air Force between 1961 and 1964. The OKB MiG studied two different projects, the 23-01 with two lift reactors, which was quickly abandoned, and the 23-11 or YE-231 with variable geometry. The latter, a true prototype of the MiG-23, made its first flight on June 10, 1967 in the hands of Alexander Fedotov. It was obviously inspired by the F-111 and the F-4, of which it is intended to be an exact equivalent. Unlike the MiG-21, it had side air intakes which allowed the installation of a radar. It was revealed at the Moscow show in Domodedovo on July 9th of the same year. Series construction began in June 1965. The first series, the MiG-23S, entered service in 1970. Only 60 of them were built and revealed flaws in reliability and flight performance. After numerous tests and new prototypes, more than 5,000 examples of the MiG-23 were built. Highly exported, MiG-23 took part in many conflicts. In Afghanistan, in the Middle East, the Syrian MiG-23s fought more than once Israeli aircrafts. During the Iran-Iraq conflict and in Angola, in 1990, a Syrian pilot deserted with his machine to Israel. The USA recovered a certain number of them, especially in Egypt, which they evaluated under the name YF-113. According to some assessments, the MiG-23ML would prove to be a superior plane to the F-16A in vertical and horizontal accelerations. On the other hand, a MiG-23M would be less maneuverable than an F-5. Number 7. Chengdu J-10 Firebird, 1,687 miles per hour, Mach 2.21. At the beginning of 1985, the Chinese authorities demanded that the Chengdu Industries launch the development of a new combat aircraft capable of beating two of the best aircrafts at the time, the General Dynamics F-16 and the Soviet Mikoyan MiG-29. In the mid-1990s, the first authenticated images of the plane showed very modern lines, far from the planes previously designed in China. It was on this occasion that its designation of Chengdu J-10 was made official. Back then, the plane was one of the most secret machines in the world, it made its first flight in March 1998. In February 2003, the first two production J-10s appeared in a flight test unit of the Chinese Air Force. They were declared operational 10 months later. Compared to the Shenyang J-8, which entered service 15 years earlier, the Chengdu J-10 was way more modern. The new aircraft was China's first multi-role fighter with fly-by-wire flight controls. It even had a fully digital cockpit. The pilot sat in a zero-zero ejection seat. This means that it can be used at zero altitude and zero speed, in other words, on the ground, while the aircraft is motionless. Fancy terms. This was again a novelty for a Chinese-made aircraft. Number six, Boeing F-A-18E-F Super Hornet. The McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet is an American multi-role combat aircraft initially intended to be embarked on board aircraft carriers. Commissioned in the early 1980s, more than 1,500 units have so far been built and exported to around 10 user countries. Since 1987, it has been used by the U.S. Navy's Blue Angels Acrobatic Patrol. The F-A-18A first flew on November 18, 1978, piloted by McDonnell Douglas Chief Test Pilot Jack Krings. A flight was made from McDonald's aircraft manufacturing plant in St. Louis. The last of the 1,479 first-generation F-A-18s, A, B, C, and D were delivered in September 2000. Their performance was disappointing for the U.S. Navy. Their observations led to the construction of a new version called the F-A-18E-F, Super Hornet. The prototype of this version flew for the first time on November 29, 1995. The Super Hornet began entering service with the U.S. Navy in 1999, replacing the F-14 Tomcat. Around 450 examples were initially planned, but this number was reduced to around 210 aircraft. 
The Royal Australian Air Force ordered 24 examples in 2007 for around 6 billion Australian dollars, or US 3.1 billion, which it received from 2010. Boeing has decided to stop the construction of these machines in February 2023. Number five, the Lockheed XF-104 Starfighter. The Lockheed XF-104 Starfighter was used during the Cold War. It was a single-engine supersonic interceptor that was designed and built by Lockheed. Its prototype aircraft was called the XF-104. Initially, it was built as a day fighter for the U.S. Air Force, but was later developed in the 1960s. It therefore became an all-weather, multi-role aircraft produced outside the United States. Luftwaffe and Marine Flieger used a total of 916 units of this fighter between July 1960 and October 1987, the majority of which were produced in Europe. Fiat in Italy, MBB in Germany, and Sabka in Belgium were responsible for the licensed production of F-104F and G fighters and fighter bombers. Out of all these machines, 292 planes crashed or exploded in flight, causing the deaths of 115 pilots and four co-pilots. In fact, the vast majority of accidents concerned single-seaters. As a result, Flying Coffin and Widowmaker were two nicknames that the German Air Force and Naval Aviation used to refer to the Starfighter. At the end of the 1960s, an ex-West German pilot did not hesitate to say publicly in the press that the F-104 Starfighter was more dangerous for his former colleagues than the East German MiG-17 and MiG-21 that they could be required to intercept along the border between the two countries. Number 4. Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor The F-22 Raptor is an American fighter jet. It was developed in the 1980s by Lockheed Martin. The first flight took place on September 29, 1990. The F-22 Raptor entered service on December 15, 2005. The F-22 Raptor is intended for air superiority missions and has intelligence, electronic warfare, and ground attack capabilities. Through its stealth capabilities, speed, and advanced electronics, it is considered a tactical fighter and a strategic element of American air power. The F-22 Raptor can accommodate up to nine tons of weapons or fuel tanks on four external pylons. The F-22 Raptor is equipped with the AN-ALR-94 passive detection system with 30 antennas integrated into the wings and fuselage capable of detecting radar signals. The production of the F-22 Raptor was stopped in 2011. The initial target of 700 aircraft was reduced to 187 aircraft. In addition to eight prototypes, the United States is the only country to use the F-22 Raptor. Number three, IAI Kafir. The Kafir, which means lion cub in Hebrew, is an all-weather fighter-bomber military aircraft designed by the industrial consortium Israel Aircraft Industries in the early 1970s. It can be described as an illegal copy of the Swiss Mirage 3S, equipped with a General Electric J79 reactor and Israel-designed avionics. On April 19, 1971, Alfred Frauenknecht, a Swiss engineer, employee of the Swiss firm Sulzer Manufacturing, under license the Dassault Mirage 3S, admitted to having sold the secret plans of this device to Israel for the sum of $200,000. Following the Six-Day War, President Charles de Gaulle decreed an embargo on Israel. As a result, the Jewish state was no longer able to supply its military aviation with Mirage fighters and spare parts. The authorities decided to precede the development of a domestically produced fighter. From this desire was born the Kafir, Israeli copy of the Mirage 3S. The success of the device in Middle Eastern conflicts and operations has led to numerous export orders of the Kafir, Colombia, Ecuador, and Sri Lanka. Furthermore, the United States leased a few Kafirs, designated F-21, between 1985 and 1989 to train its pilots by simulating aggressor units. This aircraft has not been in service with the Israeli Armed Forces since 1996. The built units are stored in different places for hypothetical needs of reactivation or for export sales. Number 2. MiG-29 The MiG-29 is one of the most widely used Russian aircraft fighters. Manufactured by the Mikoyan Gorovich, it joined services in the mid-1980s. It is designed for aerial combat in all weather conditions. It is also capable of destroying ground targets when visibility is clear. The device was sold in large numbers to countries of the former Warsaw Pact, including Poland and Slovakia. Several versions have been imagined, 
Some are intended for use from aircraft carriers, while others, slightly degraded, are intended for export. Its shape is designed to give it good maneuverability at great speed. It can even perform the impressive Cobra Maneuver. The MiG-29 can be equipped with six air-to-air -air missiles, the fastest of which can hit targets moving at 3,500 kilometers per hour, or 3,000 kilos of bombs. It also has a cannon firing 30 millimeter ammunition. The MiG-29's engines allow it to move its 11 tons, not including weapons, at a speed of 2,400 kilometers per hour at high altitude and 1,500 kilometers per hour at low altitude. It can climb up to 18,000 meters. About 1,600 MiG-29s were produced in total, and 600 of them are in service with the Russian Air Force. In 2020, it was the fifth most used combat aircraft in the world. With 815 aircraft in operation, it is notably used in Europe, Bulgaria, Poland, Serbia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Slovakia. Number one, Grumman F-14 Tomcat. The F-14 Tomcat was designed by the American firm Grumman to earn credits from the US Navy, which was looking for a new onboard device to replace the F-4 Phantom II in its fleet. Designed in 1968, the F-14 was a huge technical success. It's characterized by its variable geometric wings, which allow for good maneuverability, and its two tailplanes above the reactors. A very effective weapon system is composed of a radar, which coupled with missiles that can only be carried by the Tomcat. This allows the airplane to locate a device that's more than 160 kilometers away and destroy it while monitoring 24 other devices and destroying six of them at the same time. Its two turbofan engines allow it to fly at a maximum cruise speed of Mach 2.34, which is more than 2,500 kilometers per hour at high altitude, and Mach 1.2, which is nearly 1,500 kilometers per hour at sea level. Its maximum ceiling is more than 17,070 meters, and it has autonomy with its external tanks of 3,200 kilometers. A total of 637 units of F-14 were produced until 1992. What other super fast planes are there? Which one would you choose for a ride through the clouds? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on...